Hey everyone, this is uh, Chris and we are going to uh, do yet another tutorial on our Tetris clone and uh, what we're going to cover in this uh, video is how we can make it so that when the Tetris pieces are falling um, we, we already have it so that they're actually stopping at the ground and spawning new pieces but we also need to uh, add in the, uh, the ability for our pieces to land on other pieces, because otherwise there's no point to the whole game, right? Um, so, before we can do that, uh, we need to actually add another variable to our uh, to our game class, and this is a very very special variable for this game specifically, um, because it's a two dimensional array that is going to store all of the x and y val x and y values that are in our playing grid. So. In the width we have 10, and in the height we have 20. So with our with our grid array, we need to have um, 10 positions, and within those, or sorry, we need to have 20 positions, <clears throat> and within each of the 20 positions, we need to have 10, <coughs> which will represent our y and x values. So the way we create this is uh, I'm going to create a public. Um, and it's going to be a transform array. So this is going to this act, this grid array is going to store transforms, and we're going to initialize it with our grid width and our grid height. So basically, we're telling it the size that it's going to be. Okay. So in order to uh, to utilize this, um, we're going to need to at every time a piece lands we're going to need to update our grid array so we're going to actually create a public method for that that we can access from our uh, Tetramino class and uh, we're going to call it um, let's call it update grid okay and we're when we're updating the grid we're going to pass it the Tetramino class so that it can iterate over each of the minos within the Tetramino class, or within the Tetramino game object, and um, basically take their positions and assign those to the values in the grid array. Okay, so we're going to start by um, creating a for loop, So this, this for loop is um, going to iterate over y, um, the y coordinate from starting at point zero all the way to the uh, to the height of the grid. Okay, so it's going to go from zero to twenty, and um, what we need to do with every iteration of y, we need to do an iteration for x, so that we can check or update all of the uh, X positions for each Y position. So we're going to talk about rows and columns here because that's what we're really doing is for every Y row, so Y, the first row would be zero, we're going to iterate over all of the X columns and add um, positions in the array if our amino is at that position. So, and that's if, so we're going to have to, <laughs> we're going to have to create an if statement here. If grid x, y, so we're going to check the grid and at the current x, y iterations and check it if it's null, okay? Um, actually, we're checking if it's not null, okay? So basically, we need to know that so that now we can check to see if the grid x, y dot parent equals tetramino dot transform. Okay. So if it's not null, that means that we've already got a registered position or a registered mino at this position. So then we check to see if the parent transform is the tetramino transform that we've passed to the update grid method. So we're checking to see if it's already there. Um, and if it is, then we want to set this to null because what we're doing is we're updating the grid, okay? So, because every time the piece moves, 
we're going to update the uh, grid or if we're going to update its position in the grid. So if it moves down one, we're going to want to uh, actually remove that from the array. So we're basically just setting that position to null. Okay, so that's it for that for loop. Now we're going to create a for each. And this is where we actually are going to iterate over all of the uh, the minos in the, in our tetramino game object. So transform. So in this for each loop, we're going to get a reference variable to the position of the rounded value of our minos position. We're then going to check the uh, the y and make sure that it's less than the grid height. Because we don't want to uh, try to assign values to the grid array that are above the height of the grid. Otherwise, we're gonna run into um, array out of, uh, out of bounds um, errors and that's gonna screw things up for us. So we are not going to do that. We're gonna make sure that we are below the grid with the current Mino that we're checking. And um, if we are, then we're gonna update our grid and we're going to cast an int to uh, the positions because we're storing integers in this array <clears throat> actually we're, we're uh, referencing integers in the indexes for the array to store the transform of the Mino so we need to make sure that we're casting these as ints because they are floats um, so we're going to grab the index x index y and we're going to store amino transform um, in that position okay and that basically updates our grid all right so now we need to actually uh, we need to call this method to uh, update our grid and uh, the way we do that is um, we, we need to go back to our Tetramino class, okay? And uh, all those, uh, all these if statements here where we're uh, checking if uh, the position's valid. So where we didn't have anything here, we're going to add code in here now. And simply what we're gonna do is we're gonna find object of type, we use the game class, and we're gonna call the update grid and pass this. Um, meaning we're going to pass this tetramino class back to the update grid method, okay? And we're going to do the same thing for moving left, but then the check is valid. And then we're going to do the same thing in our rotate, or sorry, yeah, our rotate, which is right here. Update the grid. And finally, we are going to add it into our down and fall. That's going to update the grid. So now that we've uh, now that we've updated the grid with our positions, um, we have positions as reference that we can check to see if any of these pieces or um, tiles of those pieces are in spaces that we don't want other pieces to move into. Um, so. How do we do this? We well, you know, we're going to create another method in our game class, and uh, this method um, is going to basically get the uh, the transform at the current position that we're checking. So um, we're going to call this method. Uh, let's see, we're going to make it public, and uh, you know what? let's put it. Let's put it right below the, the grid. Kind of keep all things organized here. Um, so we're going to return a transform and uh, we're going to call it get transform at grid position and we're going to pass it a vector 2 as position okay and so basically all we're going to do here is uh, first and check and make sure that we aren't requesting anything that is higher than the grid Because if we are, we're just going to return null. Okay. And if not, 
we're good, so we can return the transform at the position x and y. And notice I'm still casting because, uh, like I said, all these position vectors, they use floats. So we have to make sure that we cast to an end, just in case we ever get a, a floating number in here with a, with a decimal, that would be bad. Um, trying to get that as a position in a grid, I don't think would work. Um, okay, so now that we've got our transform, uh, get transform at grid position uh, method, we can call this from our Tetramino class, and the place that we would actually call this at um, is right in here and is check is valid position since we've already got a method that we're calling from all these other methods the check for a valid position we can easily add this uh, in to with another if statement so let's go ahead and do that if find object of type game and I call the uh, get transform at grid position and we're going to pass it in the position And check, make sure that that's not null, okay? And we're also going to add find, find object of type game. I call this again, get transform, grid position, <coughs> position parent. Make sure it doesn't equal our transform. And if we're all good here, um, we're going to return false. Okay. <clears throat> so if this isn't null and it doesn't equal the transform, or the parent doesn't equal the transform, then we're going to return false so that uh, our piece can't continue to move. Um, so we're going to save this and let's go ahead and click play here, see what happens. Alright, so let's move that down. And now we got this. Let's see if this will stick to the top of that piece. And it works just like we hoped it would. Almost got a whole complete functioning Tetris game. Now, if this game was a puzzle and it was all about just putting blocks together, then we would be very, very close to being done. But there's something missing here still, right? The uh, You may have noticed that the the row that we've completed with all the pieces, unlike any other Tetris games, this this is not clearing our rows. So um, you know why, right? Because we haven't written that code yet to actually write the code to make things work. Um, so the next thing we're going to have to do here is we're going to actually have to uh, write a number of methods that uh, are going to um, check for uh, first you know we need to know if one of the rows is full okay so if all of the uh, minos in a specific row all of their x values have transforms then we know that that row is full and we can delete it okay so that's one part of it the next part would be, um, once a row is deleted, everything else has to move down by one unit. So we have to check what's above us and move all those pieces down by one. Um, and we also continuously have to update our grid with the new values um, so that, uh, you know, because we're, we're working with two different things here. We're working visually with the, the pieces in um, Unity and we're also working with a, an array grid, uh, a grid array that uh, 
you know, we used to store all the positions of the pieces in. So when we update, when we delete rows, when we move things around, we actually have to update the array and make sure that uh, all the positions match up. So, um, like I said, what we're going to do next is uh, work on that. We're going to actually make this game work and behave just like any other Tetris game um, by deleting the rows and, uh, you know, maybe creating some other things. So, oh, yeah, like a game over, maybe. Now we're just creating tons and tons of things here. All right. Anyways, no rambling on. <laughs> All right, so that's it, guys. Uh, so stay tuned for the next tutorial, which is going to cover uh, basically the uh, next part of creating the Tetris game, which is going to be deleting rows. And um, so look forward to that, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.